graduates of the Jackson Laboratory. My name is Paige and my role as technical information scientist is to serve the research community with education and practical solutions. Jax Tech Talk is a weekly 15 minute podcast style webinar where we answer frequently asked most questions. Hi everybody, my name is Dolores. I'm a senior tech support scientist at the Jackson Laboratory. For anybody watching live, use the comment section of the video to tell us where you're coming from, where you're viewing from, and uh, any related questions that you may have, and we'll try to answer them live. All right, so today let's talk Cree locks for neuroscientists. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the use of Crelux technology to control gene expression in neuronal cell types. We're also gonna cover some caveats of working with these models and highlight key resources for planning your experiments. Dolores, one of the questions we often get uh, is, what's the best Cree for a specific nervous system cell type? Um, we often really don't have a good definitive answer for that. Can you kind of speak to that? Yeah, that's a, such a common question that we get. So as you know, in the brain, there's different cell types that play unique roles. For example, neurons, glia, microglia, Purkinje cells, oligodendrocytes, and so on. So it is important to have tools such as Crelox to study those unique cells specifically. There's also the need uh, to target very specific circuits or very specific regions of the brain, or uh, there's also needs to uh, work with neurotransmitter-specific neurons, for example, dopaminergic, serotonergic, cholinergic neurons. So researchers have been trying for decades to use mouse models expressing Cree recombinase to enable, to enable cells to be specifically labeled or manipulated. So one way to do this is to use Cree drivers that are specific to the cells of interest and creating either transgenic or targeted mutant mice. But one of the problems in the field is that this is uh, quite challenging to find genes that are expressed uh, robustly and consistently in a specific cell type where uh, they have at the same time minimal levels of expression in other brain cell types. For example, the goal may be to generate a knockout only in neurons, but in fact, uh, sometimes Cree also expresses in glia cells. A less well-known uh, complication is the fact that brain and testes have a huge overlap in protein expression. So Paige, can you uh, expand on this particular issue? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the caveats of working with Cree lines, um, neuronal or otherwise, is that if Cree recombinase expresses in the germline, that expression uh, will cause recombination in all your cells. So rather than having a neuron specific, um, fluxed or knocked out gene, now you're gonna have a global knockout. And like you just said, Dolores, there's this really huge overlap in proteins between the brain um, and germline cells, um, such as in the testes. A recent publication actually found that from over 14,000 human brain proteins, over 93% of those are expressed in the testes. So there's this um, huge uh, similarities between the two. So what may be a, a good driver for neuronal cells may also still be expressed in the germline. A publication from Liu et al. in 2020 had this massive undertaking of reviewing a number of Cree strains that were designed for neuronal cell type specific expression. So what they did is they looked at both the prevalence of germline expression um, and to see if there was a selective parental germline recombination bias. Um, the study analyzed 64 neuronal Cree driver lines, and some of these are some of the most popular ones like CAMK, 2A or nesting creed. Um, of these 64, over half, and I think it was almost um, higher than 60%, exhibited some germline expression. Because of the mosaic nature of germline expression, it's really difficult to, to predict which offspring from your Cree locks um, breeding units will have that full knockout uh, indica indicative of germline expression and which will have that neuronal specific one. And that's right. It's it's a very interesting uh, publication. We we really recommend people look it up. Absolutely. So I'm curious, Paige. Uh, you mentioned that 60% of of those strains um, turned out to be uh, to have a germline expression. Were, were those females or or male transmitted Cree? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so some of the data, some of the breeding units that they um, analyzed for those Crelox um, experiments did have enough information to look at um, comparatively uh, when you inherit the Cree from maternal or paternal lines. It's really strain dependent. Um, and in strain dependent, I mean, even the same driver like CAMK2A um, may have differences between um, the different transgenes, so the different strains. Um, for example, the CAMK2A, they found for four strains that were very similarly made, um, two of these expressed maternal, um, no maternal expression in the germline. One expressed some maternal and one expressed it in both the paternal and maternal. So you really need to go strain by strain um, in order to start to understand um, what your risks are for that germline expression. Great. So um, how can people check if a Cree strain for neuro has the potential for unwanted effect of generating whole body knockout? Whether the model is a knockout or a expression reporter, how how can people deal with that? Yeah, that's a great question. So really having the proper kind of tools and knowledge before you start your neuronal Crelox experiments can hedge yourself against these unwanted complications. Um, the publication, which we do have linked in our uh, LinkedIn event, um, has some really great suggestions for ways to detect this un expected consequence, as well as identify lines that are going to be suitable for your goals. Um, the first, which we also highly agree with, is genotyping every animal for the wild type, the floxed, and the recombined alleles. And so you may need to um, create an additional genotyping assay in order to make sure that you can detect that knocked out allele. And what this is going to help you do is see if you're having um, knockout in tissues such as the tail or ear where you wouldn't expect it um, if it was only neuronally expressed. We'd also suggest, um, as well as the publication, suggest to check for the available information about prevalence for germline expression. Um, this uh, publication has a great review of many, many neuronal strains. Um, but you can also look at the Mouse Genome Informatics website um, and looking for the Cree recombinase section on any of the Cree alleles um, to see that expression characterized. Um, and so for many of these, um, you can see that the expression um, is prevalent in the oocytes or sperm. And then finally, um, if you can find out information about the male versus female expression bias, um, that's really great. That may be in some publications. If you can't, uh, you may want to do some pilot studies to test um, if male or female has a germline expression bias. Oftentimes, um, what they found in this review is that one sex uh, is better to mitigate this uh, unwanted germline expression. And then finally, uh, we would highly suggest that you publish your findings clearly. Publish the prevalence of germline expression that you observe, um, as well as if you used male or female Cree. This is really helpful for the broader experimental um, and biomedical community uh, to help us um, make some informed decisions. Absolutely. Thank you for that. So I just posted uh, the name of the paper, Optimizing awesome. Nervous System specific gene targeting with Cree driver lines, and I, uh, I gave you guys the link so you can check it out. So, I mean, basically the same approaches that you just mentioned, Paige, can be used to verify Cree strains that are supposed to be cell type specific or region specific. And for that, um, at the end of the day, what works really well is to combine, to breed, the Cree strain that you are planning to use or, or a number of Cree strains that you are planning to use to report on strains and uh, look at the actual expression. Where is it expression, uh, expressing uh, in the target uh, cell type or the target region, but also look at where else it may be expressing. Um, it, it comes in really handy having expertise with neuroanatomy, especially if you're looking at brain regions and cell types. Um, it's important to verify the specificity of Cree expression in, you know, for appropriate cell types, for example. And one thing that you can do for that is to double label for a protein marker that is specific, let's say for a neuron, if that's what you're, what you're looking for. So another set of challenges uh, that we see in, in different Cree strains is that partial expression of Cree, when Cree is not very robust, and in many transgenic Cree lines, 
what happens is uh, those founder lines that have lower copy numbers of the trans genes inserted in the genome, then uh, you know the the expression is is quite reduced in the brain, and that is why typically some founder lines uh, you can see that are better than others. So uh, also keep that in mind if you are generating your own transgenic uh, lines. Uh, you know, take the further step to characterize the different founders and see which founders uh, would better uh, be suited for your project. Yeah, it's really a matter of knowing um, both your strain, uh, really knowing which strain you have. Um, and that goes right down to that founder level, like you said, Dolores. All right, so we do have um, a couple of people on here commenting, which is great. Hi, guys. Uh, we're really happy to have you here. Um, some of the questions kind of revolve around uh, using CREATE-ERT to start to avoid this germline recombination, um, as well as maybe the degree of leakiness in CREATE-ERT. Uh, Dolores, can you speak to that at all? Right. I mean, the advantage to using a CREA-ERT line is that you can control when CRE is going to be expressed. So if you have the regular CRE, then uh, the regular CRE uh, will start expressing uh, even uh, in the embryonic stages. When you have a CREA-ERT, you can, um, and what I say, the danger of having CRE expressed early on is that it can be expressed in, in testes, let's say, and then uh, the, the knockout, if you're doing a knockout, uh, can be uh, generated that way. Now, when you um, induce CRE expression, let's say with tamoxifen, which is uh, how CRE ERT lines are controlled, then uh, you, can, you can only uh, express it when you want it, and you don't have those confounding effects. So it's a it's um it's one way to overcome that uh, danger of having global knockouts without you knowing especially if you keep breeding your colonies and having offspring not knowing that after that uh, you may have a global knockouts in the progeny is it's it's a huge problem so uh, that that is you know one comment that i had for that but it's a, it's a great great suggestion it's a little bit more complicated because you have to uh, work yourself up to um, perfecting the expression with tamoxifen, and, and there's a whole episode from JTT devoted yeah. to that, I believe. Yeah, there's a great episode about that, um, because there is that extra complication of, you know, the induction um, that sometimes can make reproducibility a little bit more difficult and adds just another confounding layer. Um, let's see. So I see some people say that the link's not working. We will make sure that we add a link that can work. Um, and there should be a link below, again, for both the LinkedIn and the YouTube. Um, let's see. Any other questions? I think that's really it for today. Um, I do. Oh, one other interesting thought is uh, using an AAV um, as well for career companies. Dolores, do you know anything about that? Using what? I'm sorry? an AAV Cree um, to oh, get... Oh, right. Yes, yes. So basically, uh, it's, um, it's a construct um, that you use by injecting a virus that expresses Cree, and it is used in neurobiology quite a bit. The nice thing about it is that you can, just by the site of injection, you can control where Cree is going to be expressed. But as anything in biology, you need to do pilots, you need to test it, uh, there may be variability like technician to technician uh, mm -hmm. if, if that is not done, if you don't have expertise in that. But uh, a lot of people are going that route. Uh, instead of breeding uh, a mouse uh, expressing Cree with a mouse expressing uh, some uh, flux version, people are injecting Cree directly. So basically, they work with a flux strain and inject uh, AAV Cree in the regions where they want uh, that Cree to be expressed. And, and, and there's a, a lot about that I see here. Uh, Daniel, it seems like he has a lot of experience with AAVs. Um, it would be nice uh, some, some someday to, to, to have the possibility for um, viewers to, to share their experiences too. Yeah, yep. And then uh, finally, one other question is, is there a big effort in place at JAX to replace simple Cree lines with Cree ERT2 lines? Right. So at Jackson, uh, at the Jackson Laboratory, we um, collect and distribute uh, many valuable strains. As you know, we have more than eleven thousand different strains. I cannot, I cannot remember how many Crees we have, but I think it's over eight hundred different yeah. ones. 
And, uh, you know, as a service to the research community, we just uh, keep them and make them ready for distribution for when people uh, need it. But we uh, do not characterize all of them. We have funding uh, to characterize uh, partially. The group of Steve, Steve Murray is uh, the group that does that. And there's a lot of very valuable information there. But the one thing that we are not doing is comparing strains side by side. And that is sometimes what, what you need to decide if one strain is better than, than the other. Yep, exactly. All right, so that's really all we have time for this week. Um, we do, again, have many links uh, available below. If we don't have that paper or the papers that we've mentioned, we will make sure that those are linked as well. Um, I would encourage you to check out the Allen Brain Atlas uh, Transgenic Characterization. They have a lot of great Korean reporter um, combinations that you can look into as well as the NIH Neuroscience Blueprint Cree Driver um, Network. We also have the Cree Repository, um, which Dolores had mentioned, which is work from Steve Murray's group um, that is characterizing uh, some of our most popular Cree models. Um, and if you want to do some of these interesting Cree LOX experiments, um, especially uh, neurobiological ones. We do have a number of um, neurobio solutions and breeding solutions uh, where we can really help you kind of get those off the ground. So thank you so much for joining us this week. Our next JAX Tech Talk is called episode 42. Let's talk oncology solutions for using advanced Cree LOX technology. That's going to be live on Tuesday, August 24th. Um, and please follow Jack's Tech Talk on LinkedIn so that you're notified anytime we that we have a new episode um, or subscribe to our playlist on YouTube. This is Paige saying stay healthy, stay safe, and stay excited about research. See ya. Bye, everybody.